Hello, we are here with Luna Hendricks, the 2022 Grand Prix de France champion and first time winner for gold medal, not only for herself, but even for her country in history. So how do you feel about uh, your success now? Just a um, later. It's still sinking in. Uh, yeah, of course, I'm super proud of my achievements and yeah, it's just amazing to to earn this first gold medal for myself, but also for Belgium. And this feeling is just crazy. And yeah, I'm, I'm just so happy. When you are on the podium and on the top of the podium, what is going through your mind? What are you thinking? Why are you just trying to enjoy the moment to soak it all in? Yeah, just enjoy the moment and enjoy our, uh, yeah, our song. <laughs> The, I don't know how to say anthem. it. Yeah, anthem. The, the anthem. National anthem. Yes. And uh, yeah, it was amazing because it was the first time and um, on such a big competition. So that was a great feeling. So this is a good start of the season for you. You started the Nebelhorn Trophy. Uh, you were uh, first place and then you were in the Japan Open and now you are here. So can you uh, summarize how you feel the beginning of the season has been going so far? Um, so the beginning of the season I choose like two different songs like uh, they were like both out of my comfort zone. Um, the short program was immediately really good, also the judges liked it. Uh, but then the free was a, a hesitation because uh, the music was not strong enough, so we had to change it last minute because we, we saw that the points were like really disappointed. And that's why we had to change something. So yeah, we wanted to change before the Grand Prix because this is a important competition and we want to get as many points as possible so that's why we we had this changement done yeah you said uh, it was last minute and in the press conference you said the final version of the music came just when you were already here so how that, how can you manage that because i mean it's not so easy i imagine no i really had a hard time uh, especially mentally it was really hard like to Two weeks ago I was really shocked and I was like thinking, overthinking about everything and yeah, the program changed, the layout changed, the choreo changed, the music changed, the dress changed. So everything was new and normally in summer you have like a, a long preparation to feel conf confident about the program and, and skating it like loads of time. But now, yeah, I just had like one week with like kind of a definite version of music but then yeah there were like a lot of changement about the accents in the music but yeah it's really hard for your head because you're used to skate on music and if there is like something else in the sound then the attention is on the music and not on the elements so that's what was that w that was what I was struggling with and uh, that was like really hard but then I gave it a chance and just tried to focus and do my thing and that's what I did here and I'm proud that I could make it. Yeah, it was perfect, it was a great <laughs> performance. So what did you think at the end when you were finished, when you were hitting your final pose? Um, I think that we, the, we made a good choice to change it because um, the morning practice before uh, my free program, uh, it went really well and I really felt confident and that's what I didn't have with the previous version, with the previous music. Uh, I was working towards Nibblehorn and I was like really hesitating about the free if I could uh, do it clean and normally I'm really confident about myself like last year as well. I really, yeah, I'm confident that I could do a clean program and that's that feeling, uh, I had the same feeling with this competition. So I think, yeah, we we made a good choice to, to change it and the confidence came back. So the first part, uh, well, it was the song Poeta and the, well, the first part of this song stayed, but then um, the, the Fallen Angel, has been, it was there from the beginning, but just a small part, or how, how was it? Or was it completely, the second part is completely new of the music? Yeah, so the second part after my choreo sequence, it's completely new. 
Um, and yeah, they composed it especially for me. So it's a, it's a new music for everybody. So that's quite interesting and special. Um, but also like the first part, the music stayed, but the choreo really um, changed a lot. So that's why it was like the feeling, it was a totally different program and free program. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy we did it. Well, why fallen angel? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like kind of, uh, um, yeah, I mean, you are not a fallen angel. <laughs> <I think. laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, but just like first it's really soft and then it's like a bit more like fighting and uh, yeah, so that's why and also like the black details in my dress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there is like the is it like the conflict between uh, good and bad. Yes, or, yeah. <laughs> this is the kind of storyline you you mm -hmm. have. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice, and then the music, as you said, is getting really powerful, and uh, that uh, that does help uh, a lot. And now the first three competitions for you have passed. How do you feel that helps you for this ongoing season? Um, yeah, the confidence is there and I just need to practice good and if I feel well mentally, physically, then I think I, I still can perform. So, and I also really need to take my rest because like last year I was really exhausted uh, before my second Grand Prix, it was in Russia and I really felt so tired. So now I need to be smart to get a lot of rest but also train hard. Mm. Yeah, and as you said, when you, uh, um, this is just, sorry, uh, I skipped one of my questions. <laughs> uh, when you said that you uh, were training your program before Neighbor Home and you had kind of the feeling that it was not really the vehicle you, you would like to have. So, um, but then at first you you said, okay, I'm still trying it. Or, because how does it work when you, kind of feel maybe this is not you select the music and then you mm -hmm. feel mm, maybe it's, it's not exactly the, what I want to do is it hard and then to say okay I, I change it um, yeah it, it was hard to change it because I didn't have a lot of time but I think I knew uh, in the back of my head that this was the, the good decision to make because if I didn't do it now when is the right moment and um, yeah, before in Nibelhorn, I, you know, before you start the season, you never feel ready, or that's in my case. Um, so I, that's why I give it a try. And also uh, with the Japan Open, um, I performed again in my free program. And then after, because two times, it was not a clean program, but it wasn't bad at all. But the points were like really disappointed. So that's why we had to make the, the changement. Yeah, and you got some feedback, I think you yeah. said, mm -hmm. that uh, the music is not strong enough. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah, definitely a good choice. You, you said, uh, I remember in one uh, interview, you told me that before you were always thinking you are not good enough or <laughs> you are, um, and, and or maybe medals are out of reach for you, but now this has really drastically changed. So what uh, is this, what was the turning point for you to gain this confidence that yes, I can do it, I can be very strong, I can beat the best in the world? Um, yeah, I think for sure it was like after I got my first medal, like at the Grand Prix in Italy, um, that was, like a dream came true because I never thought I would ever got a medal. And then at Europeans, I got second after shorts. And that was like out of my mind. I was crazy and like, yeah, just the second one in Europe because I knew the Russians were really strong and it was something I, I would never expect to yeah, to be before them, even before a short program. Um, so yeah, that was the, the time I realized that I really can do this and yeah. <laughs> 
I thought maybe it was even before uh, at European uh, World Championships in Stockholm when you finished in fifth place, you had great performances. Yeah. So maybe this was already kind of a push for you. Yes, but after that performance, I really was like, um, yeah, because I was fifth in the world and it was like so much better than I ever done. And it was like just crazy and I never expected this and then after I, I had to start a new season and I was like really afraid because yeah fifth in the world it was like it meant it was so big for me but then yeah I I proved that I that I belong there and <laughs> yeah, I guess there was maybe probably some, some pressure and expectations after this good result. Uh, you said um, that uh, now you go back and you it's start all over again. So you, why do you feel that before each com after one competition you have to start from like all over again? Because you still have to to perform again a short program again a free program and anything can happen and we are all human and. Of course, you want to perform every competition the very best you can do, but yeah, is it possible to be perfect every competition? I don't think so. That's why we're all human, but yeah, we try our best and if we enjoy them. You, in the past, you struggled with injuries. And luckily, now this seems to be past you. What did you change to make sure to stay healthy? Um, I do like less hours on the ice, but more hours off the ice to make my body really strong uh, because I really need this. And um, yeah, also after my my big injuries, I realized that I really like to skate and it's the only thing I want to do. And yeah, you just have to listen to your body and be smart. and. Yeah, sometimes it's hard because you want to push your limits, but sometimes it's not the best idea to do this. And it's hard to find the, the perfect way, but after all the experience I had with injuries, I think uh, I'm good at feeling my body. <laughs> Sometimes skaters that are very successful, that had uh, won medals or fulfilled their dream of going to the Olympics and, and so on, lose their motivation. But for you, it seems like the opposite. You get even more motivated. Yeah, I must say it was hard after last season because it was a really exhausted season. Europeans, Olympics and Worlds uh, after each other, month on month. So it's really hard and it's exhausted. but. Yeah, that's why we, we took like really one month of rest after uh, World Championships and and then, yeah, in that one month it was like so hard to, to be off the ice. I wanted to skate and, and, and train again, but yeah, you just have to yeah keep holding on to a month rest because I really need to have the one month rest because the doctors told me to. and. I think it's good to have like, yeah, to reset your body and then just go further and, and stay, like also refresh your mind. Yes. <laughs> you are coached by your brother now for uh, already like two years or whenever yeah. he, since he retired. Full, uh, only your brother, he always helped you, I know, but uh, like he is now your full time coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, is this how difficult is it sometimes to be coached by a family member? I must say it's not difficult, difficult, uh, difficult at all, um, because we really can separate our family bond and the coach athlete bond, um, and he's just an amazing coach, and I wouldn't change him for anyone in the world. Like, yeah. He's just so smart of, of yeah, planning my schedule and also if he sees that I have pain, he said uh, we'll change something and we do this and we skip that and I think that's also why I don't have like big injuries anymore because in the past it was always like go on, go on, go on. So. 
Yeah, so he, I think, yeah, he probably also feels you very well. He can read you very well. Yeah, because he, he also had like a lot of injuries, so he knows what it is, and yeah, you can feel it. How strict is he? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, of course he is strict, but I, I think he is like always making fun. If I have a bad day, he is there to cheer me up, like making jokes, and then I'm like, ha. Oh, stop it and then after like 10 minutes I'm smiling again so that's what you need to have fun on the ice and if you have a bad day someone to cheer you up and to enjoy again the day and that's what he does and that's just amazing. Yeah it seems to work really really well so that's great and last question you are sent to an isolated <laughs> island you can take three things what do you take? Oh my god <laughs> Um, hmm. That's hard. <laughs> I think my phone for sure to contact my family and friends. Um, yeah, my skates and warm clothes. <laughs> because I'm always cold, so. <laughs> You're always cold, yes. <laughs> but then maybe, but you, I think you managed very well. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much and good luck for the rest of the season. <laughs> thank you.